All right, welcome everyone. This is bypassing Wi-Fi encryption by manipulating transmit queues. And in this presentation, we are going to talk about Wi-Fi security. And Wi-Fi has been evolving over the past 20 years, always to increase the performance, to introduce better security models. And with these changes, of course, attack surface changes uh, and the landscape um, becomes uh, changes with this as well. And in recent years, we have seen uh, quite a few uh, security vulnerabilities. Some of them you may remember, uh, key reinstallation attacks or the crook attacks. And one of them I would uh, like to provide some background to because it will be relevant in our, uh, the rest of our presentation, uh, and that is the crook. And with the crook vulnerabilities, it allowed an attacker to uh, steal data from an access point uh, that was encrypted by an all zero encryption key. And it did so by uh, taking this from the transmit queue. And in this attack, they manipulated, or they, they used this, exported these transmit queues. And these exist across the entire stack. Uh, two examples are the hardware stack. This was the case uh, with crook where they, uh, the queues exist for spectrum management, but queues also exist in the kernel, for example, power management when client stations try to uh, save energy. Now, how it worked was, let's say an access point has some data buffered uh, in its hardware chip when it's uh, awaiting to be transmitted uh, onto the spectrum, and what the attacker can do at this point is send a disassociation frame. This removes keys from the access point, well, in this case, effectively, uh, overwriting them by all zeros. And then when the access point, uh, the spectrum becomes available, it could transmit this data, but now it's gonna use this all zero encryption key. So this was a quite interesting attack uh, in the crook attacks. But to us, this raised a bigger question. How are all these queues uh, managed across the entire stack? Not just this hardware queue, but also the one in kernel. And how does the client security context come into play here? And by the security context, uh, we often refer to mainly what in the standard is known as a security association. Effectively, all the data you need to establish a secure communication. Think of the protocols you use to encrypt data, the encryption keys, packet counters, and so on. And what we're uh, looking at as well is how exactly is this managed and how does this relate to the queues you can think of uh, what happens to these queues if this context changes? If the client reconnects, establishes a new key, do, it, does anything supposed to happen with these queues? So put differently, in this work, what we did is we asked ourselves, can the adversary manipulate the whole interaction between these queues and the security context of a client? And the short answer is yes, the adversary can do uh, three main things. And the first attack or the first issue we found is we can leak frames from these queues all the way from plain text with uh, all zero keys or in some circumstances with a group key. Um, and the second type uh, of attacks, we found that we found some denial of service attacks, even when management frame uh, protection is used in the network. And finally, we found some uh, issues with client isolation uh, where uh, clients within a network are not allowed to communicate with each other, but even then we find that an attacker can steal frames uh, that are supposed to be sent to a different client. So in our first finding, what we uh, did was as an attacker, you can spoof frames from the client station and you can tell the access point, we're going to sleep, we're going to save power, uh, and please buffer all the data frames you have in the meantime. Now, it's important to note in the Wi-Fi stack that these flames are, frames are buffered in plain text. Now, what an attacker can do is it can send a certain authentication or association frames, uh, depending on the implementation, and this will remove the pairwise key from this access point. Now, uh, as we've learned, then the data from these queues is not always cleared, which means that an attacker, what you can do is send a wake-up frame. You tell the access point, okay, I am finished with saving energy. We can uh, start transmitting data again. So now from the kernel, uh, the access point is gonna transmit these queues, but there is no longer a frame. Uh, um, there is no longer a key, uh, encryption keys that belong to this client. So in this case, then the access points will leak these queued frames. And this happens because, because we remove the encryption keys uh, by sending these authentication or association frames. 
we entered some, some, some kind of undefined security context where the access point doesn't know, it's not defined, uh, how it should handle these uh, queues in the entire stack, both then in hardware or in the kernel. So uh, in some cases, we fall back to a group encryption key because this was actually defined in the 2016 uh, roundup of the Wi-Fi specification. But uh, in practice, we more so find uh, than that the data leaks with uh, all zero keys uh, or just uh, in plain text itself. Uh, when we refer to a group encryption key, it's, uh, it's important to note as well that the group key is shared among all the users in the network. So if the data leaks under the group encryption key, then it requires an, uh, an attacker that has knowledge of the, the shared key of, of the network. And this affected, uh, we found these issues in both FreeBSD as well as issues in the Linux kernel. And the reason why these exist is because the standard does not define how these queues should be properly managed uh, when the security context changes. And there's two big approaches you can take to solve this. Uh, either before you manipulate anything in the security context, you can tr transmit all these queues. This is some kind of best effort approach because there are legitimate scenarios where a client has lost its encryption key. So even transmitting this, uh, taking this approach doesn't guarantee that the data is received by the client. Alternatively, you can say whenever we refresh or delete an encryption key, we by default just remove, uh, uh, we purge all the queues and all the data that is in there is now lost. In a second finding, we found some denial of service attacks, but here, uh, we don't have too much time to go into these, but the, the, the takeaway message I wanted to give with these attacks is we did not only find ways to take data from the queues, we can also exploit the system by putting specific frames in the queue. And an example is the security authentication uh, or SA query procedure. Uh, that is a, a protection mechanism for management frames. Um, we can force the access point to queue these frames, which causes a timeout and therefore uh, disconnects clients from the network. And you can take this uh, enqueuing approach with uh, many features, for example, a four-way handshake, you can prevent clients from connecting, or some geofencing uh, applications in Wi-Fi using Wi-Fi fine timing measurements. Now, in our final uh, set of findings, we found that an attacker can bypass client isolation. And this is a defense mechanism that has been introduced for uh, networks such as Aetherome uses this or public hotspots, where you don't trust the clients necessarily in your network and you want to prevent them from communicating with, uh, with each other. And so as an attacker, we assume that you can connect to the network, but you cannot communicate with others, other clients in the network. That is unless, of course, we find a way to manipulate the security context. Uh, and consider the following example. There is a client who makes a request to uh, a server on the internet, uh, let's say a DNS request. Now, what an attacker can do uh, after this request is sent is it can connect to the access point again uh, because it has the credentials, but it spoofs the MAC address of the client. Now what the access points will do is generate a new encryption key and this encryption key now belongs to the attacker. So the attacker now has spoofed the MAC address and owns the MAC address and this encryption key. Once the internet server uh, sends the response, in this case the DNS response, it will, the access point will encrypt this data with the new key and send out the response. But instead of sending this response to the original client, it is now sent to the attacker. And this kind of attack you can think of as a fast uh, security context override. We, take a, we try to override the security context before any responses come back uh, to the network. This of course uh, implies some timing restrictions, but we found that that's uh, practically not, a, not an issue. And it's also interesting to point out here that if there are connections such as a, a TCP connection, then servers will retransmit the data if it's not acknowledged by the client. So even if an attacker is not able to pull off this attack within the first uh, transmission attempt, the, the connection will retransmit the data, in which case we would be uh, on time to receive this data. And 
It's also worth to point out that an adversary can also spoof MAC addresses of servers or gateways in the network and thereby steal data that is uh, uh, intended for these components. So the big reason why this happens is in these Wi-Fi uh, networks, there is uh, the client identities are not bound to each other. So you can connect to the network with your credentials, but it doesn't imply any ownership uh, of IP or MAC addresses within this network. And that allows the, an attacker to kind of spoof these, uh, these identities uh, and, and break this kind of uh, connection between the two. So fundamentally, this is an issue because it's not addressed just in the standard, but it's more complicated than this because it goes beyond just the, the Wi-Fi specification. This is a bigger picture with all the different network components. And in order to fix this, it's not quite simple. And this is not a simple code fix we can do to prevent this from happening uh, because this goes beyond uh, just an access point and involves with all these uh, network components. And even more so, because of this, uh, all industry stakeholders, standardization bodies are all involved in this. So finding a, a, a proper solution to this is, uh, is not an easy uh, task. What you can think of a couple examples, though, that you can take to, to solve these issues is you can, for example, reject uh, a reconnection if it's a MAC address that you have recently used. And this was a, a defense mechanism that has been impl implemented by, by one of the vendors by now. Uh, but alternatively, you can also, in these kind of networks where client isolation is important, you can, for example, also force uh, VLANs or uh, use uh, separate networks for all these untrusted clients. Uh, or finally, you can use uh, cached uh, keys uh, when you reconnect using a prior MAC address. A drawback of this, however, is this needs to be supported, of course, by the, all the clients in the network. Uh, and these things can, can take some time, of course. So since we disclosed all of these issues, uh, what has happened so far? Well, uh, for now, we have seen that Qualcomm has proposed a change to the standard uh, where they improve a new way for, uh, cli for reassociating clients uh, to connect to the network. Uh, so it is adding uh, more defenses on how the, the client, a client reconnects to the network, which also covers, of course, legitimate use cases when a client is roaming or if it just uh, is out of range of the network and needs to reconnect. Uh, so to conclude, we've seen quite uh, a few issues here that are fundamentally in the standard and that makes things quite tricky to fix them because there are so many stakeholders to, to deal with and in Wi-Fi, and I'm sure uh, you may be familiar and, and if you work in different uh, wireless uh, protocols, this kind of adaptation of new changes takes a lot of time. And uh, to us, it also showed that security research in this remains important, even if these protocols are, specific, are, are well tested already or specification has existed for a long time. Uh, it's still uh, important to, to keep looking at uh, the security aspects of, of them. So with that, I, I thank you for, for your attention and happy to take any questions.